Gracious and loving God, inspire us, help us to support one another on our journeys. And we pray for peace. We pray for peace in many, many ways. And we ask, Lord, that we continue to use prayer as a resource for our lives, to use scripture to pray, to bring peace to Pastor Lowell and his family as they say goodbye to his mother, as they rely on prayer, on scripture, on your love, and the love of their brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we continue this wonderful journey, and I can't think of a better theme than the rhythm of prayer. Prayer and scripture, vital in our lives, not only in times such as this, but in every part of our day and night. And we're looking all the time for a resource for our lives to make our lives better. And the Bible is our best option. So hear me as I read the text from Philippians 4, verses 12 to 13. Paul writes in verse 12, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. And he goes on to say in verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I think this text is so appropriate for many people, especially people that are suffering from weariness in their life, wondering what is this all about, God? What is this all about? And we are blessed tonight to have a testimony from one of our sisters in Christ who is such an awesome example of how to get through weariness, grief, and to learn from it, to grow from it. And some of you know Ginger, Ginger Emerson, and she's an American Gold Star mother. And she's going to talk tonight about what it's been like to lose her son, Corporal Matthew J. Emerson, and how prayer and scripture has helped her. So, Ginger, please. Thank you, Pastor Judith. I, I just happened to stop by the church office last week and drop something off, ran into Pastor Judith, and I was dressed in my American Gold Star Mother white. Gold Star Mothers have been wearing white since 1928 uh, versus the morning clothes of the day we chose to wear white. And she saw my name tag and immediately knew what a gold star mother was, and she started asking me a series of questions, and it eventually led to the fact that uh, before our son left for the, uh, the army for boot camp, uh, we had given him a Bible verse. We had a farewell party for him, and had townspeople and classmates, and our family was there. And we gathered them around, we had a few words to share, and our verse that we had given him was Philippians 4, 6. Uh, I think you're familiar with it. Be anxious about nothing in all things uh, through prayer and petition. Take your request to God. We thought it was very fitting for Matthew. I also think it was quite fitting for me because I had the tendency to be anxious about him leaving. Uh, he had just signed up for a war. So uh, it was fitting for both of us but we wanted him to take those words with him. Uh, about a year and a half later, 
he had finished boot camp, he had earned his jump wings, and uh, he surprised us with a trip home about two weeks before he was to deploy. And I noticed him kind of pacing in the living room, and, and uh, I said, all right, what's up? And he said, Mom, I have to ask you a question. What are you going to think of me if I have to kill somebody? And it took me by surprise, but I explained to him that I figured that would probably happen as he was going off to war and that his grandfather had had to uh, experience that in the war. And fortunately for me, I had just read Luke 22, and I shared that with him. I told him that the night that Jesus uh, had the Last Supper with the disciples, that he gave them instruction. He was going to send them out again. He said, remember the first time I sent you, uh, I told you not to take anything with you and God would provide. And he did. But this time, I tell you, take a purse, take a cloak, and take a sword. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and get one. I don't know about you, but I knew that the disciples were not going to be cleaning their fingernails with that sword. They were going to defend themselves, and it might uh, actually end up in having to kill somebody in order to preserve their life. I shared that with Matthew, and I think he was relieved. And just a few minutes later, I did say something about him putting himself in harm's way, and, uh, and that I was anxious for him, and he said, Mom, you know as well as I do that my days were numbered before I was born. So I was able to give him scripture to relax him. He was able to give scripture to me to relax me. And the, the proof there was that it wasn't my opinion or his opinion. It was God, and it had to be true. Um, several months later, I, I've got to tell you, uh, he deployed in November, and I think it was in June. I was listening to the news probably too often, and I was getting pretty anxious. And in prayer one morning before wake, work, I, I lifted Matthew up to the Lord and I said, there's not a thing I can do to protect my son, so I'm going to give him to you and I trust you. And when word came in September that he had been killed in Mosul, uh, almost the first words out of my mouth were, I still trust you. And I'm telling you, the next two weeks especially, but the next few months were unbelievable. We, we went through the, all of the military protocol and the military funeral. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was at the funeral I discovered that I was a Gold Star mother when I was handled, handed the Gold Star lapel pin. And we had more blessings and more amazing things happen to us uh, in the months that passed, um, things that we could not even have imagined. And about six months later, I was reading uh, Matthew's verse again. And I don't know how many times I had read this verse, but I had missed one line. Uh, after it asked, asked uh, to give everything to the Lord in prayer and thanksgiving, he said, and he will guard your heart. And I knew right there that that's what had happened. We had friends suggest that we should be angry or upset, and uh, it just wasn't that way. There was uh, joy in, even in our grief, and um, God, again, was keeping his promise. He was guarding our hearts. And I have many more stories, but I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Ginger, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I've asked Ginger if she would introduce her husband and her grandchildren because when I talked to her this week <laughs> in the office I she said 
what about my grandchildren? I said, please bring your grandchildren because what a role model, what a role <laughs> model that your grandmother is of strength and courage and that she prays all the time and reads the Bible and I hope that her grandchildren will grow up to be just as strong and brave as she is. So I want her to introduce you now. So when she introduces you, I want you to stand up, okay? <laughs> I asked her if they'd be embarrassed and she said no. <laughs> Well, first I will introduce my gold star husband, L.J. Emerson, commonly known now as Papa. <laughs> and then we have Rollin Matthew, he's seven. We have Emmett Robert, he's five, and Ian Michael, he is three. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that each of you remembers that testimony because when I met Ginger this week, all I could think of was my three sons and how would I be? And I hope that I would have the faith and the strength to carry on the way you have. And, and I know that they've been blessed to share their love and strength with other people. And when you were telling me that you go to Arlington and you plant flags next to those that have lost their lives and and that you go to places that none of us will ever go. She was sitting with the Congress, I don't know how long ago that was, when was that? February 6th and the President, Vice President were there with her and it's just so nice to know that you're able to be strong and and be an example to other people. So, And I know you all have your faith stories. And if any of you want to share a testimonial, that was our plan to begin with. But as things unfolded, just didn't all happen. But this has been exactly what God has ordained. And thank you, and thank you to your family for the sacrifices that you have made. And for all the rest of you who have lost loved ones serving our country or who have given your lives to serving our country. I thank you. And I'm just going to put a little plug in for Wednesday Night Live that as we have um, Veterans Day November 3rd on a Wednesday, I believe it's November 11th. I'm glad I don't carry a calendar so you guys I can check to see if you're with me. Anyway, Veterans Day. One of my best friends, Admiral Cecil Haney, is uh, retired. He served at the Strategic Air Command um, in Bellevue when I was serving as pastor and he was one of my parishioners and he's going to fly here from the East Coast and be our speaker for Wednesday Night Alive on Veterans Day, November 11th. Got it. Okay. So let us continue with some scripture and um, this I think is appropriate for anybody that's bereaved and it's from Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. And then from Psalm 55, verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. You are sustained. And in John 11, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? I think you do, because we, we believe we live a resurrection faith. We know that this isn't the end for us. No matter how we journey through life, life is going to be where all of us as saints join together. And in John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, what have I told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And I'm sure that Ginger probably has some of those me memorized also to sustain her. So as we go through the hills and valleys of our lives, please remember 
pick up your Bible. There's all kinds, all kinds of words in there that will bring comfort to us as we use that as a resource for our lives. And as I said earlier, it's the best option we have. You might have lots of books in your library, but nothing is going to serve you better than the Holy Scriptures. And so I'd like to close, and I found out how to pronounce this gentleman's name after I did it wrong last week. This is a book of morning and evening prayers, and it's by Bud Roofs. And uh, we're going to be using this during our Lenten journey. And some of you know him. Raise your hand if you knew Bud, or if you know Bud. Okay, thank you. Here's our prayer that we will close with at this time. God of grace and God of glory, before whose eyes all human hearts lie bare and open, forbid that I should attempt to hide from you anything that I have this day done or thought or imagined. Forgive me for the sins of this day, for the decisions I made without ever seeking your advice, for the words I have spoken in haste or in passion, for every failure of self-control, for every jealous or lustful desire, for every poor example I have set in another's way, and for every opportunity lost, I thank you that your forgiveness is more than sufficient for my sins. Grant, Heavenly Father, that as the days go by, your spirit may more and more rule in my heart so that my life can be more centered on you and I may become a more loving person as well as more victorious over sin. Give me, I pray, a more gentle spirit that I may be slow to anger and quick to show mercy and forgiveness. Thank you for this day and for the rich experiences that have been mine in fellowship with you and with family and friends. Thank you for the inspiration and encouragement that has come from those who love you and have shared their faith with me. Help me to be a faithful witness of yours. May you give me the strength to love, even as Christ loved. As you release me from doubt and fear, use me to bring hope to others. Remove all prejudices that lurk inside of me. Help me to see and admire the faith of other Christians who see things different from me. Eternal Father, thank you for helping me to face my own death. My only hope is in you. How I thank you for the promise of heaven beyond. In Jesus' name, who forgives my sin, I pray. Amen. And he closed that prayer with a Bible verse from John, 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. And thank you again, Ginger, for teaching your children, your grandchildren, and being a good example for all of us how to live a resurrection faith. And now we continue with our hymn, at this time.